And we are back. Power Rankings Week 6 Edition. Getting right into it. We have a new worst team. Starting out at number 32 going down one spot. We got the Carolina Panthers. They're now the only winless team remaining. Being 0-5. The Bears who were right there with them ended up getting a win. And now... It's just the Panthers as they fail to beat the Lions, but I don't think anyone's surprised by that. So, yeah. And I'm going to stand by it. I think you should bench Bryce Young for Andy Dalton. And the only concern is now that you've given Bryce Young to start. If you bench him, it could wreck his confidence, but you should have started Andy Dalton week one because Andy Dalton is just a better option. Bryce Young wasn't going to take it to the promise line immediately. Let him learn. But now you're in a bit of a situation where you have to keep him. At number 31, we got the Broncos, who are 1-4. They're going to be going down a spot. The Broncos, they ended up losing to the Jets. Sean Payton, all of the, the Broncos talked so much crap just to lose 31-21. In a game, they probably should have won. But here you are. Without the win... A one and four, already looking like Sean Payton's a bust as a head coach. Maybe Drew Brees made him looking like Bill Belichick right now. And number, but if there is a team who can turn around, it is the uh, the Broncos. It's just it's probably too late. And number thirty, we have the Giants. They're going to be going down two spots. Giants are one and four. They failed to get a win yet again, as they ended up losing. Uh, to the Dolphins, 31-16. The good news is they at least kept this game, for the most part, entertaining. It wasn't, like, incredibly close. But it was to the point where, like, it wasn't a game where people were like, what other games are on that I can switch to? It was a game where people were like, I'm going to keep watching it because in case it does turn interesting because it is, you know, close enough to do that. So, Giants, congrats on keeping it close. But other than that, you didn't really do anything. 29, we got the Cardinals. They're going to be going down two spots. They're 1-4. and four. They dropped 34-20, to 20, I believe, to the Bengals. Uh, the Cardinals played that game pretty solid. They played an amazing first half on offense, but they just didn't really get much going second half-wise and never really got close to beating the Bengals outside that first half. So... Cardinals, don't worry. No one expects you to be good, but Jonathan Gannon is looking more and more like a good head coach week after week. So, you guys look like you got a hidden gen. At number 28, we got the Commanders. They're going to be going down four spots. They're two and three. They end up losing 40 to 20 to the Bears. That gave the Bears their first win of the season, and you best believe I knew that upset was going to happen. I mean,. It just, the stars aligned, you know? You could argue it's a trap game, yada, yada, yada. But the reality is the, the commanders are still 2-3, and three, so they still have an amazing shot at making the playoffs. So let's not, you know, get ahead of ourselves. I wouldn't say amazing. They still have a decent chance, like better than a lot of teams. At number 27, we got the Patriots. They're going to be going down five spots. Here's the thing. I am finally... Not being sold on the Patriots. I was like, oh, they got Bill Belichick. Uh, Mac Jones can't be this bad. They're going to turn it around. Yada, yada, yada. Bill Belichick hasn't looked great. Mac Jones has looked horrific. I think he's arguably done after this week. Uh, might just want to give Bailey Zappi a, a chance. But, uh, yeah. Patriots, you're in the sweepstakes for... Uh, Caleb Williams or Drake <clears throat> or Drake May. And yeah. And in all fairness, you probably want to hope to get one of those two because I feel like the other quarterbacks, there's a bunch of them just kind of there who are arguably first rounders, probably will end up being. It's just I don't feel like they have the impact that Caleb Williams and Drake May have. 26, we got the Bears. They're going to be going up six spots. 
Let's go, Bears. You got you got one. You finally got a win. You finally on the board. Now, good luck. Because, you know, you got, you know, more games ahead. And I personally feel like that was just like a trap game. That was a game I felt like you were destined to win. And now that you won, I feel like you're going to go back to the the old bear sucking way. Justin Fields, I will say, has looked amazing, but don't get confused. Because if he starts having bad games again, then I feel like it's just worth getting rid of him because he can't be consistent. 25, we got the Vikings going up a spot. Even though you lost, you kept it close with the, uh, the reigning champs. So can't get mad at you. You end up losing 27 to 20 or something like that, 30, 23, somewhere around that range. I mean, a big thing is Travis Kelsey was did miss a decent part of that game, which obviously meant the Chiefs were at an immediate disadvantage considering him and Patrick Mahomes are 95% of that offense. But... Nonetheless, he kept it close, so congrats. It just wasn't enough to get it done. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to move you up any higher. You're still 1-4 and four after all. Number 24, we have the Raiders. They're 2-3. They're going up five spots. This, this one hurt. As a Packers fan, I watched this game while at work. So, it hurt a lot. Uh... Because that's a game the Raiders should not have won. And and now it just looks like Jordan Love is not a primetime quarterback. He looks like he's going to be Kirk Cousins. But we're not talking about the Packers. The Raiders, they look pretty dang good that game. They managed to stop the Packers on offense pretty solidly on defense. They really, sh- or, yeah, I don't know what to say, but... The Raiders' defense came in clutch. They did what they were supposed to. The offense for the Raiders definitely could have used a bit of work, but Josh Jacobs showed the flashes, showed like a pretty solid game for uh, you know how quiet he's been, and I feel like that's just only going to get better from here with him. The Raiders, you might be back. 23, we have the Jets. are going to be staying the same. They end up winning. 31-21 against the Broncos. Now, I'm not going to discredit them. That was a well-played game. That was a game they should have, could have, would have, did win. Uh, But it's against the Broncos. So I can't be hype about it. It's not like the Bills where I was like, dang, even though Aaron Rodgers is injured, this team could be good. It's the Broncos. So it's two garbage teams. One of them has got to win. And it just ended up being you guys. So congrats. 22, we got the Bengals up three spots. This team looked amazing. Joe Burrow looked like he was finally getting comfortable with that uh, calf injury, was able to make plays. Jamar Chase, we, you know, he's living up to his word, saying he's always open. And this team just looked amazing. The only concern is it was against the Cardinals. Like I said, a bad team. So it's the same thing with the Jets. I can't really, like be so hype about it and be like this team's back this team's gonna be amazing when you beat the cardinals so yeah granted if you beat a good team or a team who's like middle of the pack then then you're gonna jump up again but until then mm-hmm. i'm not gonna be 100 percent sold on you until you either like start destroying the bad teams or you beat good teams 21, we got these Saints down four spots. Oh, the Saints team had an amazing first two weeks. And after that, they've kind of just slowly but surely gone on the downcline. Uh, they just haven't been doing well anymore. Derek Carr obviously injured. But here's the thing. You might be wondering, why am I bumping this team down four spots? I don't believe this game was big. All right, it's the Patriots. I feel like this is a game where the Saints just played perfectly, had like the perfect matchups and everything. 
I'm not sold on this Saints team. I think there are teams ahead of them that I'm bumping up. That's why they're going down. So it's unfortunate, but it's the case. I love the Saints. Their car is one of my favorite players in the league. I love like their roster. Chris Olave, Ohio State guy, of course I love him. It's just I'm not sold on them yet because they beat a Patriots team who has Mac Jones as their fucking quarterback. Saints, I, I'm like actually sorry for like bumping you down four spots and one where you should have gone up 10. But I just not sold on you and that's why. And number 20, we have the Packers are going to be going down six spots. Jordan Love, yeah, he he looks fine, but man, these primetime games, which have been back-to-back, by the way, have made me start to question them. One touchdown, five interceptions, it's not amazing, man. Uh, The only other big concern is Matt fucking LaFour. I'm a better head coach than Matt LaFleur. If if you gave me like half the money he is getting, I could do the same exact thing he does. Where I just call, you know, little two-yard check down, screen passes, end arounds, you name it. I can do it. But you know what he does that no other head coach has really done that concerns me? Is seeing that the place that he is well known for is like everyone knows about it has not worked. Loss of five, loss of three, gain of two, nothing game changing, but he doesn't fucking move out of it, bro. It hasn't worked. Stop calling it. They're going to keep expecting it because that's all you fucking do, man. I have so much confidence in you that you can be a good head coach if you fucking switched up your play calling. Instead of just hoping, praying that it just one day started working. Because it's not going to. Because everyone knows you right now. You need to switch it up if you want a chance to be brought back, bro. Fuck, man. Change it up. This is bias right here. This is me as a fan saying what I have an issue with. This is what every Packers fan feels right now. Is Matt LaFleur needs to change up his play calling or he needs to get the fuck out of here. He isn't going to bring us a Super Bowl playing like this. He needs to know that. He needs to know that his job is on the line. It sucks, yeah, that in Jordan Love's first year as a head co- or as a quarterback, he's going to lose his head coach potentially and have to deal with the next one next year. And that's the only reason I can see him getting brought back the way he's playing is if Jordan Love, you know, they want to try him out for another year. But at this rate, like, it might just be best to say goodbye to both of them after this year. Number 19, we have the Falcons. They're going to be going up two spots. I mean, Atlanta, you not only won that game, you played amazing. Kyle Pitts looked back. He looked like his rookie self. Drake London made some hell of catches. Desmond Ritter. Yeah, he 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 was amazing. This is a guy who I didn't think was going to be amazing in the league. I felt like he's going to be a solid backup, but nothing more. Ooh, he looked amazing. And Bijan. That's my boy. Number 18, we got the Steelers up two spots. Told ya. I knew it. The Steelers own the Ravens. It's just known. It doesn't matter how bad the Steelers are and how good the Ravens are. The Steelers just have the Ravens number. But here's something I'm going to get a lot of complaints about. And this is like a thing I, like a big thing I saw. Mike Tomlin looks like Mike McCarthy. Where he has such an amazing roster. Because look at Mike Tomlin. He's never had a losing season. 
he has such good rosters to the point where, you know, he has really had to worry about losing seasons besides like two years, which he actually, you know, did solid. It's just he hasn't had amazing seasons in a few years now. He has a lot of like eight and eight, nine, seven, nine and eight seasons. And I still think he's an amazing head coach. Top seven, arguably. Five ish, somewhere around there. But I feel like he doesn't really know, like, or let me say, I feel like he has so much of an attachment with, like, his employees that he doesn't want to fire. Because Matt Canna should not be employed right now, and yet here he is. And I feel like that's Mike Tomlin who's kind of, like, keeping him around because he doesn't want to hurt his feelings and stuff. Mike Tomlin, you got to, like, come on, man. 17, we got the Texans. They're going to be going up two spots. Another situation where even though you lost, you still moved up because you played amazing. You should have won that game. You fell short. It's okay. Move on. You're the Houston Texans. You've got a rookie quarterback who has, you know, thrown the most pass attempts without an interception. So congrats on history, CJ Stroud. Uh, you have... A promising young team. So, no one expected you to be good this year. But, you are expected to just, like, go up. Like, you're, like, next year, improve. Maybe sneak into the playoffs. And then a the year after that, you're com- you're contending. Is how I view you. So, and honestly, I might, like, that's might be, you know, disrespectful. You might be contending next year. Number 16, we got the Titans. They're going to be going down a spot. You fall just short. In fact, number 15, we have the Colts who are going to be going up three spots. The Colts beat the Titans 23-16. to This was an amazing game. This was like the primary game I watched during that time. It was amazing. These were two teams I, I gave it their all. And almost, you know, both teams played like they wanted that win. Both teams played like they deserved that win. It's just unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you look at it, only one of them was able to get it, and it went to the better team in the Colts. Uh, another thing that sucks, Anthony Richardson, he's out again for what looks like multiple uh, weeks. So get better, man. Number 14, we got the Rams. They're going to be going up two spots. Another situation. You kept it close with the reigning NFC champs. One of two teams who are still undefeated. That says a lot. For a team that no one expected to be good this year and you are hanging around with the best of the best, that says something. That has layers. So, great job. I think you are more than capable of making the wild card. It's just, in my opinion, a lot of people were saying the NFC wasn't going to be great, but you have a lot of solid teams so far. I mean, if we don't look at, look at, if we don't talk about the vision leaders, we have... The Packers who are two and three, the Falcons who are three and two, the Cowboys who are three and two, the Commanders who are two and three, the Seahawks who are three and one, and then the Rams who are two and three. Oh, and also the Saints who are three and two. I don't know if I mentioned them. The NFC is just looking very good right now, so only seven teams can get a spot, so you gotta fight a lot for it. Number 13, we have the Buccaneers. Uh they're gonna be staying the same. They had a bye week, so we're just gonna skip over them. Same with the Browns, but they are going to be going down a spot because the team moving ahead. 11. We have the Ravens. They're going to be going down three spots. They end up losing a very good game to the uh, the Steelers. This was like another game I had on, except it was on my phone, so I didn't see as much as it compared to that, you know, Colts, Titans. I mean, this is another situation with the Colts signs where both teams played like they wanted that win besides the Ravens receivers. If the Ravens receivers catch the football, they would, excuse me, they win that game. There's no if, and, or but about it. They win that football game. But they didn't, so they lost. Don't worry, Ravens. I still have a lot of, like, hope for you guys. But... I mean, you're in a tough division right now. The Bengals, the Bengals are the worst team in the division right now. That says a lot. Skipping over to Chargers, they're at number 10. 
They had a bye week to over the Seahawks. They are number nine. They had a bye week. They are both staying the same. At number eight, we have the Bills going down for spots. I told you. I knew it. Nothing wrong with the Bills. But, man, their injuries are good. Trey White and Matt Milano, back-to-back weeks. That is not a, you know, that's not great. Especially with Von Miller now, like, being back. It really does suck. Uh, but this team is special. It just unfortunately lost uh, a game to the Jaguars, which I expected to happen because the Jaguars have owned the Bills. It's just one of those where you kind of, like, no matter how good and bad you're going to be, you know the result of the game because of, like, recency, recency bias stuff. And that's just what I saw. And Bills, don't worry. This game is fine. You're still going to be fine. It's just now it's unfortunate because now you're behind the Dolphins even though you hold the tiebreaker. And now you don't hold the tiebreaker over the Jaguars, which could be very bad. And speaking of the Jaguars, we're not even going to talk about them. They're at number seven going up five spots. Uh... We just kind of talked a lot about him already. Besides Josh Allen. Josh Allen, uh, Jaguars, is amazing. Ooh. Number six, we got the boys going nowhere. Listen. We all know the 49ers have the Cowboys number. Now, when I saw that Sunday Night Football game, I was like, this game's going to be amazing. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, this game was a blowout. Don't worry, Cowboys. You're going to be fine unless if, you know, this, like, gloss really, like, stays in your head. Then you got to, like, get out of your head. Stop thinking about it. You guys will be fine because you're the Cowboys. You have one of the best rosters in the league. Don't worry about it. You got this. Dolphins have five going up to spot. This team is amazing. This team is is dominant. This is arguably the best team in the AFC roster-wise. The only concern is I f- don't like the amount of times these like star players on them get injured. Devin A. Chain now going to be missing a few weeks. Uh, he's been like your best uh, like player right now. That's concerning, uh, but... You have one of the better head coaches in the league. I think you guys will be fine. You just have to adapt. Number four, we have the Chiefs going up a spot. They did everything they could. And they won. It wasn't by a lot, but they won. They were able to win that game without Travis Kelsey for a lot of it. And man, does turf suck? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Like, I don't, I just don't understand why you still have it if you're the NFL. It's been, like, an ongoing discussion for years. Yeah, the only argument being made, and this is probably why the NFL still has it, because they're greedy little bitches with their money, is money. They don't want to pay the extra money to maintain grass. You are billionaires. Invest some money into your field, man. Number three, number two, and number one are all going to be the same. The Lions are going to start with, they get dominant win over the Panthers. I don't think anyone was surprised by that. But the Lions are looking like they will contend with the Eagles and the 49ers. The Eagles, they've really been struggling, but they've still been getting wins. So that's the Eagles' way. I'm so happy for the push push or the brotherly shove. Now that people are kind of starting to realize, hey, this play is unfair. And here's my only issue with it. Is the formation where, you know, you are allowed to push in, like, push players. I have no issue with quarterback sneaks, all right? It's where offenses are allowed to push their players, but defenses aren't allowed to, like, do theirs. Like, defenses can't push defensive players, like, in those situations. So, it's kind of like you have to just, like, out-muscle a butt ton of people. And that's just very hard to do, especially with Jason Kelsey, one of the best signers in the league, and Jalen Hurts, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And, you know, who have you seen how much he squats? So, I feel like, and I have, I'm going to say it, I have no issue 
with the fact that it's a broken play. I have the issue that the defense can't use the same technique that the offense is using. So you either got to allow the defense to do it or you have to take away the offense is, you know, allowed to do it. Once you get that, I think it's going to be a pretty solid play, honestly. I think it's going to be run a way less amount. I think it's still going to be decent enough. But it's going to be to the point where it's like actually exciting to watch. You're not like, oh, here come the Eagles running their bitch-ass play. Going to get a free yard. But yeah, the number one 49ers. This team has looked unstoppable. I mean, as long as they stay healthy, they're winning it all. That's my take. And here it is. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. We're done. See you guys next time with predictions. And just as a heads up, there's probably only going to be one Bears franchise this week because I am super busy. And that's, like, not even lying. I got work for the next five. Well, I got work Thursday through Monday, man. And then there's, like, the NFL to look at. There's school. There's family. There's a bunch to look at. But, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. I did. Next time, tomorrow will be predictions. And after that, I have no idea when you'll see me besides, obviously, the power rankings once again. Bye. Hope you enjoyed.